What is good, beautiful people? Love Batista, the people's preacher with this uh, moment of courageous heart community. Um, I want to share with you that what you're seeing here is the new church. Uh, I believe to be the true church and it's not the only church. The beautiful thing about these times that, that what's going to arise is millions of these small inherent churches that remember that you are the medicine, that you are the truth, you are the reason, you are the community, you are the ceremony. And so when we gather, this is not the ceremony, this is a collective ceremony because we come in tandem to share our ceremonies and in that we have miracle to be possible. And the miracle is that you get to be more of you this week, maybe a little more loving, a little more peaceful, a little more thoughtful, a little more relaxed, a little more insightful, a little quicker to offer compassion, a little quicker to offer a kind word or a smile when you feel it. My voice is going to be low today because this is the last place I want to be, but this was the place I'm supposed to be on Sundays, even if it's just me. And so I'm showing up today. And so I ask you to cover the space with me because the most important thing is showing up. Now in the church of the courageous heart, the second thing is paying attention because actually what we pay attention to is one of the most richest sources of energy we have. And we live in a time when everybody wants your attention, but very few people want to give back reciprocity, want to offer you back something as rich in return for the attention that you paid them. They're happy with the transaction. Once the transaction is complete, they're full. For us out here at The Courageous Heart, the transaction is not complete until your attention is received with something of wealth and then you find the courage to go out in your life and apply it. Actually make your life better because you were here with us at The Courageous Heart each week. And that you get courageous enough to command that you don't leave the Courageous Heart community without something that you're worth applying to your life so that this becomes invaluable to each one of us. You see, back in the day, the guru relationship was one-on-one, -on -one, y'all. The most important thing of a guru's life was to find the one person they can, they can give all of the knowledge that their life and the guru that taught them gave them. And then hundreds of years back, that expanded. And now there was one guru to thousands of people. Can you understand the dilution that took place? Can you understand what happens when you are the sole attention and all you need to be is courageous and willing and focused enough to show up to prove that you are worthy? Now there's a thousand of you sitting in an audience. There were times when just you weren't even, you weren't even willing or able to think that you were worthy of the teachings. They had you so wrapped up to think that just to be in the presence of someone that was worthy made you more worthy somehow, that you should be thankful just to be in their presence, y'all. So that broke down. And now thousands of people could have teachings now. Now, just in the 1900s, the gurus were getting messages to send people to the West and to give everyone the information, to give the download. Now we're 20, 30,000 people are being introduced to the information, but I feel what lost the beat was the amount of rest of responsibility that we were being burdened with. Because now you, now I, were responsible for the teaching. We're responsible to position the teachings in our lives as centers. We, there was no longer the monastery that was reminding us everywhere we look, everything was saying, come back to center. Now we're at work. Now we're in the middle of an argument with our partner. Now we're in a busy supermarket. Now we're in Home Depot. Now we're in all these places that it's very rare that you're going to get an arrow back to you. And so the responsibility was on us to center that. So the old churches are diminishing because they're not giving people the water. People are coming to the water hole malnourished, dehydrated, and they're leaving that way. There's no more pedestals. We're all on solid earth. No higher, no lower. And the true teachers are the ones where each week they become less necessary in your life because time is fleeting. 
and we don't know how long we have together, how many breaths are left in the tank of us. And so each week we have the opportunity to depart as much as humanly possible so that each one of us can release the crutches and stand straight and then become immediately the crutch for another. The ability for someone to lean on you a little more for a moment as they recognize that one day they'll be able to follow suit. So this is the new church, the new evolution of teaching. We're each the ones that matter. We're each carrying something so precious, so important, so valuable that you cannot go home without giving it, without leaving it here. So I want to touch deeply today on several things, but I'm going to go through them very quickly, and they will be the foundation of the courageous heart. And if you are called to be one of the people that are here to bring your magic into this ceremony, then I want you to know all everything to expect. One, we have human needs. We have the need of air. We have the need of water. We have the need of food. Once we have those three, we're ready for the party. And that's when we get into belonging, y'all. We have a need of belonging. Now, this is such a huge one, so I just want to slow it. That's why I even said in my words, belonging. And we have a need to belong without conforming. How many groups are you a part of where you're being uh, held hostage with the possibility of them revoking your card if you don't act right? Or you can be in this community. You could be one of us, but you have to act this way. This is how we act. This is how we talk. This is who we hang out with. This is how we spend our money, right? So you could belong with, as long as you follow these rules, that's not belonging, y'all. That is not belonging. That is a pretense, and it's worse than not belonging. It's worse than being alone because you think you're getting a good meal, and it's empty and sometimes toxic. So I just got to speak to it, the need to belong without conforming. A group that says, come as you are. Come as you are. And in this space, become more of you are as you are. And that means you are going to individually individuate in this space. You are going to become more and more unique in this space because that is what you truly are. And the next one is being on purpose. Once you remember that you're one of a kind, made in the image of the divine and here to shine, the figure, the questions are, who, how, and where do I do that? Because that sounds amazing to me. I hope it sounds amazing to you, that you are here to shine. That is your job, to be amazing, to be a unique vessel, one of a kind, something that only you can do. And so in this community, not only are you going to belong, but we're going to be pulling on you, the unique of you, the delicious in you, the one of a kind of you, and say and bringing more courage and heart to that you. So you have a purpose in you. You have a reason that you're here. And in the ant colony, ants can lift nine times, seven to nine times their weight, I think. So they literally, you watch them walking up a wall with a cracker seven times the size of themselves. That's like a golden, right? And ants are so amazing because they know who they serve and they serve it as a collective. And so here we are with this huge cracker inside of us. We have the ability to carry seven times our weight. We have the ability to go out into the infinite and pull back something of such value that we can actually embolden the hearts of so many people. And we see it when we see a dancer. We see it when we see a musician. We see it when we see a preacher. We see it when we see uh, anyone doing what they were here to do. Any more examples? Can you give me an example, Betsy, of other things where you see people just effortlessly any elite, doing? Any elite athletes, athletes. Yeah, any athletes. I'm thinking maybe you want to share with us some things that you just get in awe when you look at people. And the best thing is they make it look so easy, the way they carry the cracker up the wall. An acrobat? That, that Acrobats you try, are crazy. That you try to carry that cracker up the wall and you ain't moving anywhere. <laughs> You're like, wow. But the essence is making it look easy. And there's something that you can do with so much ease. And every ounce of you is asking you to get lost in the art of mastery. Because inside of you, you know you could do something amazing. And the beautiful moment that we want for you and I want you to want for me is that one day I can feel myself doing it. And I can feel, experience myself being a blessing to other people because I'm doing it. And just take a deep breath 
of the purposefulness of that moment that all those quiet moments of suffering where you were alone in it, all the moments when the community didn't believe you that you even had the ability to do it, the moments when you doubted yourself, the moments when you questioned, am I gonna go home without doing anything meaningful when I know there is a, 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 magis- a, a magical thing inside of me larger than I can explain. All of those moments when people left you alone or questioned you, All those moments when you didn't feel like you had anything left in the tank and still you went to the drawing board, you went to the gym, you went to the dance, you picked up the instrument, you practiced your voice, you started writing, you you wrote the pages, whatever it was, those moments when you had to find it out of nowhere because you know that's why you were here to do. My prayer is that every single one of us before our last breath gets the moment of celebration internally, externally, dancing in perfect harmony with zero ego. Just pure the little child in us that knew what things really were, what was really important, what was really meaningful. Ooh, that was a lot. I got one more thing I could talk about. Should I talk about it? Or did we do the thing? Because that was, that was a lot already. Talk about it. Talk about it? All Give right. it to the people. Give it to the people. Give it to the people. All right. Um, this might be one that we could practice. This is actually a practice one. This is good. This is an application that if you do right now, you take this on this week. I promise you, if you return next Sunday, you're going to return with talents in hand. You see, there's a story in the Bible of the three that received the talents. And one received the talent and it went out. And it just spent it without care, right? And it lost the talents. The second one went out, took the talents and invested them in a smart way and got talents back. And the other one went out and buried the talents. And so when the master came back, they went and they unburied them and they brought the exact talents back to the master, right? Um, I never understood the meaning of this story until what I'm going to share with you right now. Um, And I always thought, you know, it was a story about money, but I actually through growth have learned it's a story about your gifts and that your gifts are born to multiply. Your gifts are born to be be given out. They're, They're meant to be practiced with and used and explored. And they're gonna take courage and they're gonna take heart to walk those beautiful gifts that are yours out into the world because you're going to walk a gentleness, a a pristineness into a world that is very far from it currently. But the point is when all of us actually accept the assignment, the face of the earth is going to change in a moment, y'all. One moment you're sitting on the beach and you think you know the game and you think you understand the rules and everyone's playing by them. And then you look up and there's a tsunami and it is game over for the pretense. There's no more fighting back. There's no more grab your militia. There's no more what rule or law to calm the people. There's no jamming cell phones. It's like grab cover, y'all. And so what I believe is that when enough of us grab the personal assignment that we each know we're carrying, there will be a tsunami of love, a tsunami of of, of reckoning, a tsunami of righteousness is is what you said? Righteousness. Of righteousness. Thank you. This is a community conversation, so thank you, echoing the moment. There will be a moment, can you imagine the moment that has been prophesied when we will turn our weapons, our 847s, into tools of earthing, into tools of planting seeds? The time of war will be so far in a concept that we could take the things that that the angry, that the misunderstood use to hurt each other, to bring life and to feed each other. I don't, these, these, this is possible. I know it because I'm carrying it. I know it because you're carrying it. I don't care how quiet it is to the noise around us, grabbing attention. There's a place in each one of us that knows this is truth. That peace is not only possible, it is it's time to shine. And so there are five yous. And when you're born into a, a royal line, which you are royal, you are one of a kind, made of the image of the divine, you are of the seed of the of the of the most high goddess and God, right? 
is what you are made of. So there's no more royal line. <clears throat> this is the justified royal line, and each one of us is carrying it. So there's eight and a half billion of us that have equal shares to the birthright of Earth at this time. Eight and a half billion of us that have an equal share. Equal shares to the birthright. To the birthright of Earth and everything it produces, which means we have an equal share in the need to protect our birthright because Earth mm -hmm. is the greatest teacher. It gives without request. It doesn't guard the line of reciprocity. It just gives and it gives and it gives. What a beautiful teacher. And so there we come together to become the guardians. Eight and a half billion of us, the tsunami of love. So, ooh, you got love going. I told you, give love, it to the people. Love, I did not think I had it in the tank. It's in the <laughs> tank, y'all. Um, so we have the mental us. We have our mind. We have the physical of us. We have the greatest thing we'll ever have. The greatest resource we will ever be given. There are literally billions here. There are more waiting in the skies, hoping, looking for a family to, to land into and to have a chance to walk in this body because only in this form can we move energy, can we move this world, can we have a say in the global conversation on the earthly plane, okay? So we have the mind, we have the body, we have the physical, all right? Then we have the spiritual body. We have the internal and the external and all the different bodies out. Paying attention is so important. If you're sitting in this community right now, just pay attention. And if you don't have the attention to pay, come back and watch the replay. And if none of those speak to you, I bless that you find something more worthy of your attention that will feed you back right now. Okay. But if you are here, you matter even through this telephone, even through this computer screen, we are connected right now, all eight and a half billion. When you do something beautiful, it will go out like a ripple and touch us all. That's why we get hit with overwhelm at moments when we don't know why. And, we, and, and actually sometimes, not as often, but sometimes I get hit with joy. And I don't know what happened. And it might have been one of my brothers in Africa choosing compassion when he didn't think he had it. Or one of my sisters when they give birth and they go to cut over and they're bringing forth, you know what I'm saying, the wildness and the beauty of what women do. We have birth your dream on Fridays, y'all. Check in for that because I'll, I'll go off again on that as well. But when magic is happening and we find the space for grace, we all get it. So we have, what do we have, Betsy? A little quick test to make sure that you were paying attention. Uh-oh, a test? Yeah, because paying attention was the number one reason showing Mental, up. physical? Pay, yeah. Did you go to the third one and I yes. missed it? Yes, we went, see, you see? She went away home with a half full bucket, even though I was pouring. I believe I'm pouring. Spiritual, spiritual, you are the center body and all the spiritual bodies out. And some people, when this is their area, um, they can like really break down all the different spiritual bodies that we carry and they're infinite, y'all. And not only can they break them, but they can see them and they can even have you understand how to work with yours. So you have the spiritual you, right? Then you have the emotional you, the power center of you. I was just realizing the other day, you know, when I got my heart broken, but I told myself under the greatest misunderstanding of my life, I never want to feel this way again. How many of you have, have your heart broken and you said, I never want to feel this again. And so what you did is you shut down a part of your power source in that misunderstanding. Now here I am 45 years old and I can't feel it again because I was in power when I said that. I made a decree, don't ever let me. And so from that point, I half loved or maybe I three quartered loved and then I got hurt again. So I half loved and then I got hurt again. I quarter loved and then I signed up for marriage, the most righteous thing you, we can sign up for, a promise for a lifetime with a quarter tank thinking I was gonna make the whole ride. When I needed all of the love, I need all the pain. I need all the heartbreak. I need all the joy. I need all the feeling like you can tear me apart right now. If you do me wrong, if you do me wrong, I am done for a month. I am out of commission for a month because I love you that much. I've allowed love to be that real in our relationship. When is the last time we've loved adults? When's the last time we've had the courage to hand it over? But it was real because that's how it was before we knew the rules. 
That's what we did naturally. So that's nature, is to love that profoundly and to take the hit, to take the hit of feeling that alive if the hit comes, okay? And to remember that we can withstand the hit and love again with the same amount of power that we did the first time. That we can take the hit and do it again and again and again. And it's not about them, it's about us feeling fully alive in the moment, in the moment of love is gracing us and is with us and in the moments when it's not. So that was emotions. Every emotion is a beautiful emotion as long as you could turn it into beauty, into power. Anger, you could turn into righteous action. Sadness, you can turn into revelry of being alive. I had a ceremony recently where I was on the floor, bunched over, stomach twisted. And I was in love that I could be alive to feel that much uncomfortable. I don't know. It's something snapped in me. The part of me that's just reaching for the joyful moments, the buffet, like life is a buffet and I only want to eat on this side. No, life is a buffet and I want all of it because when my last breath finds me, I will take any of it. We do not get choosy. I've had the blessing of being with people when they take their last breath. They are not choosy for the next breath. They'll take any form of it. And then the last one is financial. There's the financial us. So there's the mental, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, and the financial us. Now, the thing about these five, why I want to share them with you and why I want to challenge you to take note this week, write out a piece of paper and make a star, right? And make the five points. And I want you to ask yourself, how is my physical form right now from one to 10? Where is it? How is my mind right now? How is my memory? How is my ability to process? How is my ability for discernment to make decisions? How am I doing mentally, right? Emotionally, how are my emotions? How free am I? Do I cry when I'm sad? Can I experience my anger when it's present? Can I experience my joy and my love when they're with me? Where am I? How am I doing emotionally? Spiritually, how connected to the divine. Remember I told you my job as the people's preacher is to remember that you do not need me. You need you. The channel for creation is within you. And because I can lift seven pounds, I'm going to lift pounds for you. And so you can come to the gym and take that five pound, turn it into 10. And one day your body lifting your own weight. And then that's when you become servant. You know, that's what people look at you and be like, what is happening for you? Because you look really joyful right now. There's a peace in you. There's a shine in you. And begin to ask you to, to, to serve them. And for those that are already doing this, the courageous heart is for you too. There's an opportunity on this platform for you to start lifting your seven aside. There's so many different aspects of the way that this leadership of us, because everyone in here is leading something. And our job is not to step on each other's feet because we want to get bigger and bigger in the throne of us. And then there's the financial. How ability can I cultivate my life? How, how able am I to buy the foods I need, to pay for the, the surroundings I need to be in that generate me? How am I to be able to be helpful to the people around me when they ask for it? Like, how are my finances? Are they in order? So one to 10 in all of these things, because the financial world, the capitalistic world will, will make a doorway and invite you through, but only invite the financial you through. There's actually a teaching of the of monkeys. How you catch a monkey is to create something the monkey wants, a banana, put it in a box with large enough for the monkey's hand, but not large enough for the banana to come through. And so the monkey will see the banana, stick its hand in, grab the banana, try to pull it, but the banana won't come. So we'll sit there fighting, trying to grab that banana through uh, long enough for the thing watching that wants the monkey to grab the monkey. So that's how it is. I see it in the capital. There's nothing wrong with money, nothing wrong with green chi. It's just how are we using it? Are we using it remembering that there's eight and a half billion of us that have equal share to the pot? And so the doorway of the financial systems only have enough room for one of us, the financial one of us. But 
all five are necessary for thriving. If your mental, if your mind isn't working right, you go to the dementia facility right now. I don't care how big their bank account is. I don't care how vibrant they are. I worked at uh, Alzheimer's facilities. It doesn't matter if they don't have their mind to to focus that and to use that abundance. If your body is failing you and you're getting close to your last breath, the other four they disappear because you're not going to be here to wield them. You could have all the money in the world, but if your relationships are inflamed, you're going to have to leave the money, go back and fix it all, and then come back with your family, with your mind, with your body, with your spirit to find the bag, the money bag. And you're going to need a lot less of it because when we're around each other, we have so much more to give around. A dollar stretches so much further when we're in it together. So that's the five U's. I would love to know next week if you already knew your five U's, if you already were paying attention to it, and how do you do it? How have you done it? For those of you that are hearing it for the first time, please come back. How, like, what does your chart look like? Because the chart is so amazing because a lot of times spiritual concepts are so hard to make pragmatic. But what I just shared with you is pragmatic as, as heaven. You can literally look at it and say, wow, I'm a three in my emotions right now. So today I'm going to, I'm going to, put my emotions up front. I'm going to put some time in my day to work with my emotional body, work with my joy, my pain, my anger, my res- whatever you're feeling to give it the room, right? Or my spirit, my, I need to meditate today. All right. I'm going to postpone that meeting or whatever it is. And I promise you y'all, if you, the five star you finds a door big enough for you, this is one of them. The courageous heart has room for all of you and as big as you could possibly get with all five of you, then you're going to authentically be able to walk through and you're going to be authentically be able to decline things that feel seem perfect on the outside, but your emotions are like, but I'm not invited. But your spiritual body, but I won't be able to talk there. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense, y'all? And you're declining, you're declining. I'm not going to that party because I know there's parties out there where the door archway is big enough for the whole me. They're actually going to check me at the door and be like, that's all you got? That's all the shine? You better go to the buff up shine section. Let someone shine you up right now. Give you a glass of water, some fresh air, a meal to eat, some belonging. Remembering you're welcome here no matter how you are, because simply because of who you are, right? And then some purpose. What are you here to do? What are you here to give? What are you here to share? So in this short time that is here, I am a minister of now. We need you now. You need you now. There's someone outside you're going to walk by today that needs you today. So I know a lot of people are putting it off until they're ready, until their bank account reflects it, until their living situation reflects it. I want to break that down and say, you can do it now. Just like I didn't think I could show up today, and I did. And I went to town. And now for Love Batista, let's make it really quick. I don't get paid when you pay money. I get paid when I hit the jackpot. And the jackpot for me is one, you showed up. Two, you paid attention. And then three, you applied something that spirit gave me to give to you, that you applied it into your life and you got more of you back for it. Your children got a better parent. Your partner got a better partner. Your place of business got a more beacon of light and a powerhouse. You in the, in the silent moments with self got a more peaceful environment. That you're like, well, I can hang out with me. I could do this, right? I could take another five seconds before picking up my phone or turning on the TV. I actually like you, homie. You know what I'm saying? Where have you been? <laughs> I remember when you and me, we used to play all day long out of nothingness. I, we used to turn twigs into castles, you and me. I've missed you. So if I could have a little piece of that story be remembered in you, and then I only know I got the jackpot if you come back and share it with me. So there's four sevens on my jackpot. And then you being willing enough to come back and be like, love, I did. I got a little bit more of me because of the moments I spent with you. Thank you for showing up. And then I'm like, Ooh, you can't imagine the, the payday that is. And then that gives me the power to show up again next Sunday for someone else. And Betsy's pointing to something. What are you There's pointing a to? spider floating right into you. Oh, yeah. That's been happening, actually, after healing sessions. Building the web, because that's what we're doing. We're really building a web of good sense of love, of power, of purpose, of belonging. So I love you so much. 
this was a courageous heart, Betsy. Looks like she has something to share. Well, I was wondering, I heard something in what you were sharing that I think could add to the practical exercise with the five pointed star. Yeah. Can yeah. I share it? Yeah. Cause you shared the story about the monkey. Yeah. And part of what I know you think is so profound about that story is the slats of the cage that they built would fit just the hand, but it won't fit the banana. But because the monkey won't let go of the banana, it stays stuck. Yeah. And that's what allows people to catch it. If it just let go of the banana, yeah. it would be free and yes. it could run away. Yes. So I guess the thing I also heard that could add to your exercise is to also examine in all these five areas, are you holding on to anything that's keeping you stuck mm. where you are without feeling the fullness of any one of these five areas? Yes. And could you just let go of the freaking banana? Yes. That was a, thank you. For, I feel like you should have put the camera on you when you spoke. Oh, it's all right. Did, did, you, uh, did you hear that, guys? Let go of the banana. Just let go the, of the, the banana. Whole point of the, let go of the banana, unless the banana is within a doorway where all five of you are able to enjoy it. If mm. all five of you are welcome, then the, the trick of that catching that thing is that it was never big enough for all of the monkey. Mm -hmm. It was never intended to enjoy the banana at all. And a lot of the structures that are omnipotent in our culture or pretending to be never had room for us at the feast. Well, that's a trick banana. Go yeah. find yourself a free banana. Well, that, like, go find yourself a banana that's not in a cage trying easier, to trap you. Exactly. That's easier said than done. Yeah, fair. First, you need all five of you. <laughs> First, you need to remember that there are five of you that need to get through the doorway. Yeah. And then you can look for the banana that's in doorways that are large enough for all five of you, because that will be the test mm -hmm. of it's, if it's really for you. It's gonna test us, y'all. Yeah. How many people have become very successful and they, they jeopardize time with their family to do it? How many times have people have become very successful in our culture and they don't have any community and they start telling us it's so lonely up here Yeah. because I left everyone behind and grabbed this and now I'm seeming ungrateful that I, that, I, that I have what everybody thinks they want and I don't want it anymore. What I would do for, for a laugh with the arms of my daughter or my son looking at me like I was the king of their world again. Was it Jim Carrey that said, I wish everyone would get to be rich and yeah. famous so that they would realize that they life and joy doesn't lie in being rich and famous? Oh, uh -huh. always for, chasing something. Thank you for showing yourself. I was watching, I was getting ready this morning and I was looking at my afro, my pre-fro. Pre-fro. And I remember as a little boy, they used to make fun of me because my mom, look how many hearts you got, Bets. I did. You got like tons of hearts. We should just <laughs> focus on you and I'll be speaking from the background. All right. You'll be animating me. No. <laughs> My, my mom, she didn't know about haircuts because I was her only son. And so she didn't know. So I was walking around with this little fro piece, very similar to the one that I'm still blessed to have today. So I really should be celebrating the hair on the it's head. It's true. You got a but good, instead, thick head of hair. And I'm thinking, look at the fro. So this is a little boy in me, man. I used to walk around the Bronx, little goofy, little emotional <laughs> boy looking for my, safe, my place of belonging. And now I'm finding it with you, you know, almost 38 years later. So I love you so much. Courageous heart, we are out in the future. When you're here, uh, you have an opportunity to share a need of yours with the community. Because remember, there's eight and a half billion stewards of the annuity, of the birthright. And so you need the like, annuity. You know, your birthright, I don't know where that came from. I don't even know if I use it right, but it is what came from. Well, through. an annuity is an account that you put for safekeeping. It is like your birthright, but it accrues interest. It grows. Yeah, it grows. So that's the word that Spirit that's wanted. That's why I liked it. That's the word Spirit wanted. So there's eight and a half billion people of us actually guarding the annuity. When we're doing it correctly, right, um, we could be protecting that. And therefore, your neighbor might have two toasters when you're in need of one. And we've had moments in the Courageous Heart community where people have actually asked for a toaster. And the other person was like, oh, my God, I had this one. I got a new one. It still works. It just didn't work with my new me model. But I didn't want to give it away. I'm so happy you want it or people have time, or people have a gift, and they can't give it away. And all it takes is you being willing to ask for it, for it to give them purpose, which once again is one of our needs. So if you have a need, you can share it now in the comments. Uh, and then we'll have 11 minutes of liberation where I'm gonna talk less because this has been an overview. Normally I have 11 minute sermon, then we'll have 11 minutes to liberation where someone literally sits down in the hot seat, in the love seat, and unpacks something that they're working on and then it liberates us all. When one of us claims liberation, we all get liberated. And then we'll do the, the needs. People can ask for something they need. And then and we make sure, did you leave with more energy than I found you? I'm leaving with more energy than I came today. Betsy, are you leaving with more energy than I found you? Heck yeah.
All right. So did you leave with more energy? If the answer is yes, a miracle has happened. And now I pray that you go out and invest that goodness that is you, that energy that is in you, in making your life rock for the five-star you. Peace, y'all. All right, beautiful people. Thank you for listening. If you were moved by what you heard today, you know what to do. Like it, share it, spread the love around. Until next time.